You know what you're listening to? You're listening to the theme team bringing the light of Islam right into your hearts. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney radio program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Our dear listeners, welcome to another episode on the Dean Team with us today, the uh, famous Hoblos. Assalamu alaikum, Hoblos. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for tuning in. And Mazin, salamu alaikum, Mazin, how are you today? Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My pleasure to, to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Alhamdulillah. And uh, your brother in Islam uh, with you here in Malaz as well today. And we want to talk about somebody very important today, Mazin. Somebody very, very important. We should see this person as a role model, as a teacher. And uh, this person that we want to speak to, uh, speak about is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest man to ever walk the earth. The greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, his most beloved. He is, def- he is Habibullah. As-Sadiq al He is, he is, you know, subhanAllah, you know, Allahu Akbar. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the one who, who, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions all the prophets, or most of them anyway, in the Quran. And he says, salam on ala Ibrahim, and salam on, you know, be on Musa, and salam be on Isa. So it was asked, you know, what about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't say in the Quran that salam be on Muhammad? He said, no. He said, inna Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi. This is the status of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the greatest, the biggest gift to ever be given to humanity ever was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, in the, in the Qur'an, Hoblos, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses every single Prophet. He says, Ya Adam, uskun anta wa zashak. Oh Adam. He says, Ya Musa. He says, Ya Isa. He says, Ya Zakariya. He says, Ya Yahya. He says, Ya Nuh. But when it comes to Muhammad, he says, Ya Ayyuha al-Rasul. Ya Ayyuha al-Nabi. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's how much honored he is in the Quran. It's amazing. Um, you know, when you when you look at the the seerah or the uh, the uh, biography of the Prophet peace be upon him, the historical biography, you know, it's it's an amazing story. It's a miracle. It, it's uh, that in itself. If nothing, if you know nothing else, is a miracle within its own rights. If you look at the history, if you look at the the lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you look at his, you know, the the instance where he received prophethood. You know, here you have a man who had no, it was not in his best interest to come up with, you know, uh, uh, you know this, this new deen, this new way of life, right? Or to, to, um, to bring this to the Arabs. He was from a, from a noble family. He was from probably the greatest of clans of Arabia, from a, from a very high and superior lineage. Um, and he, had, he, he could have anything he wanted. He could have wealth, status, power. Women, women, um, you know, uh, uh, a place, uh, you know, in society that people would die for. Um, you know, so it's not as if someone came along and you know he 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 went from nothing to something. He had everything at his command, yet he chose to go with the command of Allah to spread the word of Islam of La Ilaha Illallah, even though he knew ultimately that this would. You know, it would cost him all these things that he had. And to me, that's one of the greatest lessons, you know, one of the greatest things, you know, when I speak to someone about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that this man had everything to lose by what he did. But he had the conviction to go, to do it anyway. You know, subhanAllah, this is, this is something that a lot of the mashayikh, they actually speak about. And they say that this is another sign, right? This was a sign during his time that he really truly is a prophet because it was unknown for the Arabs to claim prophethood. Subhanallah. Right? Because we know that the Arabs, they come from the lineage of Ismail. Ismail. Right? So this, so this was an unknown thing because we know that the only prophet to ever come after Ismail was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But rather for the Jews, it was a known thing because, because, you know, all the prophets came from the lineage of Ishaq. Yes. Right? All the way up to... 
all the way up to Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. But for an Arab, for an Arab to claim prophethood, they knew that, hang on, this wasn't an Arab thing. You know, this this isn't something that Arabs do, you know, which which is, yani subhanAllah, a sign, right? And it was a sign back then. But, you know, Mazin, I just want to go back. You mentioned the seerah. Yes. No man in history was ever documented the way Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was documented. Wallahi, companions, they followed him around and every word he uttered was documented. How he walked was documented. How he talked was documented. How he sat was documented. How he ate was documented. How he slept, he was documented. You know, companions had so much love for this man. They knew the amount of white hairs that was in his beard. 13. They counted 13 white hairs. You know, it's, it's, wallahi, it, it amazes me, not so much that we know he had 13, but yani, it actually crossed the mind of the man that was looking at him <laughs> to think, hang on, let me count the white, yani, really, you know, how many people do you love? But when has the thought ever crossed your mind of thinking, you know what, maybe I should count the white hairs in my old man's beard? It will never ever, but they loved him so much. And everything about him, everything he did, everything he said, everything he ever, subhanAllah, you know, he, he, it was all revelation. You know, and, and companions, they wanted, yani, not, not copy him, they wanted to be him. In everything, you know, subhanAllah. So, so you know, this is, this is within itself, it's a miracle. You know, wallahi, no man, subhanAllah, no, no, no king of the past, no ruler of the past has ever been documented the way that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been documented. And he was so beloved to the Sahaba, but he should also be beloved to us as well. And further on what you said, Mazin, before, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the revelation, he went to Khadija and she reassured him, radiallahu anha. And then she took him to her cousin, Waraqa ibn Nawfal, and he says something amazing. Waraqa ibn Nawfal says something amazing to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responds with something even more amazing. <laughs> Waraqa ibn Nawfal says that this person that came down to you had a namus. The same namus that came down, the archangel Jabril that came down on Musa alayhi salam. And Waraqa ibn Nawfal says, I wish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me life so that I can be there when your people take you out. When they go against you. When your people exile, exile you. Yeah. you. Oh. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most beloved to the people of Quraysh, as-sadiq al-ameen, the people, they, they trusted him, they called him as-sadiq al-ameen, they had so much love for him, so much honor for him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, Awa mukhrijiyahum, are my people going to kick me out? Are my people going to exile me? Can you imagine the emotions going through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that moment. That would have been an amazing time just for him to comprehend what was happening. Subhanallah. So he knew from the start of the revelation that people will be against him. People will be against him. But he stood strong. Stood strong by the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He trusted no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only changed Quraysh, not only changed the Arab Peninsula, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the world, the world. through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his message. In fact... We cannot become Muslim. You can't call yourself a Muslim until you proclaim that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, you have to bear witness. You have to bear witness and testify that he is the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, wallahi, it's, it's really, Allahu Akbar, you know, imagine of all the people of the world, how many millions of people that are currently alive now and how many... You know, sorry, billions that, that, are, that are currently alive and how many billions came before and Allahu Alam how many will come after us. Yet out of all the creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chose Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And He chose him for the greatest task of all. You know, He, he was to be and He is. He was peace to humanity. He was the one that came to change the world. You know, subhanahu wa I know... Um, this gets mentioned quite a lot, especially when people talk to non-Muslims about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But the, you know the book that everyone always keeps quoting, the hundred most influential by Michael Hart, um, and I, I do have a copy of that book, and it goes basically it goes through the hundred most influential people according to this 
person's um, you know, is a secular scholar. If he goes through, he has certain criteria that he decides who was in, not necessarily the best or most beloved, but the most influential person. And he has criteria, you know, was this person a father, a husband, a statesman, a warrior, uh, you know, a general, um, you know, all these. He has criteria that he goes through. And he, in his book, 100 Most Influential, lists the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the most influential person in the history of the world and um, and he even in his foreword uh, explains himself he says you know pretty much along the lines of I know people are going to have a go at me for this but these are the reasons these are my criteria and he's the only person in all of the people that who I went through who ticked all the boxes right so and, and this is the reality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know you mentioned before about um, we know everything about him because there were sahaba that dedicated they didn't work they dedicated their whole life and their time to be around him, to to record what he did, what he said, how he did it, you know, from from you know things like you know from going to the bathroom to you know how he ate to you know every single every single thing that we as humans do. And reality is, when you look at someone like you know, you mentioned before, we have role models. As humans, we have this innate nature that we need role models, right? Whether we realize it or not, we have role models. Yeah. You know, we look, we we copy the way certain people eat or drink or dress or do their hair or whatever it is, we do copy it. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that perfect person that the more you learn about him, the more you love him. The more you scratch beneath the surface, the more you see how amazing he was. The more attached you get. And the more attached, the more you love him and the more attached and the more in turn you want to emulate him. Whereas any other human being, regardless of how good they look on the outside, the minute you scratch beneath the surface, you start to see cracks. You know, and this is reality. We've seen it so many times of people that were, you know, you would never thought anything bad of this person, whether they be a celebrity or not. And then, you know, something comes out that, you know, they did some sort of sin or some sort of, you know, act. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the perfect guidance for mankind. And this is how Allah Azza wa Jal describes in the Quran. You know, I, I, I think it's very important to sort of mention, you know, what does, yani, what makes Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam different to all the other prophets? And it is that every single prophet and messenger came for his people. Correct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent them to this particular nation, to this particular town, to this particular community, right? Whatever it may be. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent down for all of creation. He was, right, to all of the human beings. But not only that, he was even sent to the wildlife. He was even sent for the mercy of the earth. He was sent for the mercy of the trees. He, he was sent, subhanahu, you know, you know, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sent as a mercy. And this is what makes our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so different to all the other prophets and to all the other messengers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ A mercy to all the worlds, the humans, the jinn. As you said, uh, Brother Hablas, you know, wildlife, the, the wildlife, nature. the nature, the animals. I mean, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us when we slaughter an animal to hide the knife. To Allah. sharpen the knife. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was concerned for To the not animal. let other animals see it. For the welfare of the animal, that was his concern on sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And before, you know, touched on what you, what you said earlier, Mazin, about how, um, you know, non-Muslims have said beautiful things about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Absolutely, 100%. One of the most beautiful speeches that I've read about and heard about is the one that Jafar bin Abi Talib said to an Najashi in Habasha yes. when he described Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, that was... Can you imagine that? Imagine that moment. Imagine this... People that have left Mecca and gone, migrated to Abyssinia, to the Habasha. And they are confronting a king, a very powerful king, a king that has so much sovereignty. And they are describing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen to what, what they say. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib told him, he says, O king, we were plunged into the depths of darkness and ignorance and barbarism. And we adored idols and we lived in unchastity and we ate the dead bodies and we spoke abominations. I mean, we disregarded the feelings of humanity and duties of hospitality towards the neighbors. And we knew no law, no law but that of the strong. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised a man amongst us, whose birth we know, whose truthfulness we know, whose honesty we know, and we, we, were, we were aware that this person is pure. And he called us to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and told us not to associate anything with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he forbade us from worshipping the idols. And he told us to speak the truth, enjoined us to speak the truth. He forbade us from worshipping the idols. He told us 
to, to have trust and be merciful and to be good to the neighbors and to be the good to the parents. And he forbade us to speak evil of women and to eat the substance of the orphans. And he ordered us, ordered us to stay away from what is harmful to us and stay away from evil, to offer our prayers and to give charity and observe fast. I mean, you have to really think about the state of the Arabs when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to them. And the Arabs were barbaric. I mean, yeah. this is well known. There was the Persian and the Roman Empire. Nobody wanted to conquer the Arabs because they were so barbaric. <laughs> they, were so, so barbaric. they used to bury their daughters alive. Bury, they had so, so, so much ignorance that we call it jahiliya. So much ignorance in their life. And one man changed them from darkness to light. You know... You know, Allahu Akbar, you know, sometimes when we talk about, you know, that this was a people that was in darkness, you know, brothers and sisters, we're talking about a group of people who went to war, tribes that would go to war for 40 years, 50 years, over a camel race, over a camel race. So imagine five, six generations ago, my father, right, or my great, 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 had a camel race with your great, 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 and one of them, whatever, he cheated, or the other one won, or the other one couldn't hack it. So tribes after tribes, generation after generation, would go to war and kill one another because of a camel race. And this group of people, you know, you know, <laughs> Malaz, you, 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 you were saying that they were surrounded by the Persians and the Romans. These were empires. And empires, it's about conquering Right? That's and right. and obviously, Expanding. you know, to expand and yeah. to conquer. Yeah. So, and the Arabs would have been a very, very, very easy conquer. Right? The Arabs would have been a very, very easy one. Why? Because there, there were small little, small little groups, small little patches of tribes. And really, they... There's no unity amongst them anyway. They really didn't stand a chance yeah. anyway against the Persians or the Romans. But the Romans and the Persians thought, you know what? It's more trouble than what it's really, really <laughs> worth. Yet this same group of people were to be the ones who not only changed themselves, but changed humanity. They changed the course of history. And ultimately actually even got rid of both of those empires. And they were the ones who actually ended up conquering both the Romans and the Persians. And the Persians. What you know? a great character. I mean, what a great character Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam must have been. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده ووالده والناس أجمعين. In fact, it's a condition of faith that we love Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم more than our fathers, more than our children, and more than all of the people around us. It's a condition of faith. We must love this person, this person that has brought us Islam. I mean, can you imagine our life today without Islam? Can you imagine our life today without لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله? The biggest نعمة, the biggest blessing of Allah سبحانه وتعالى was this religion. Delivered by who? By Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, Malaz, we, we, we mentioned before, you know, in previous times about, you know, that concept of, of loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than your, your parents, for instance, you know. And I've got to admit, when I first sort of heard that statement, it was actually quite a big thing for me. Because I've grown up, you know, my parents are the be-all and end-all. And now all of a sudden, I've been told I've got to love this person that I've never met. You know, as much as we say we love him, we've never met him, right? And, uh, and you sort of, you, you're asked to love him more than your own parents, for instance. And it dawned on me, subhanAllah, at some point that, you know, by loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you actually are loving your parents the way that they should be loved. That's you know, right. it is a, a more complete love. And I've heard a sheikh once explain as well that, yes, your parents looked after you in this dunya. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will look after you in the dunya. And the hereafter. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You know, no, Amazon, you're, not, you're not the only one that was shocked by this statement. Allah. Umar al-Khattab, the Khalifa of the Muslims, he came so to I'm good company. Yeah. You're in good <laughs> company, inshaAllah. He came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and told him, I love you more than anyone else but myself. Subhanallah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded to him and told him, Umar, unless you love me more than yourself, then you are not a true believer. You don't have the, the correct faith in your heart. Allah. And Umar thought about it for a second. He told him, oh Rasulullah, you are more beloved to me than anything in this world, including myself. And Omar is not the kind of person that would have just said that, right? To sort of uh, make uh, Rasulullah no, happy. No, no. This... When he said something, and I the mean, proof there of was that... conviction behind this. And the proof of that was that he actually took a moment yes, to think about it. And just... then he made the claim, okay. Now, you know, also, loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ibadah. You're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And 
There is also a danger, my brothers and sisters, when you don't love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Rasulullah, he says in the beautiful hadith, he says, ثَلَاثٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجَدَ حَلَاوَةَ الْإِيمَانِ That you will never taste sweetness of iman. Wallahi, you will never, you know, you know, anyone, anyone who's tasted iman knows what I'm talking about. Right? It's, 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 it's an unbelievable feeling. But he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that one of the things you have to have to taste iman is what an yakun Allah wa rasulihi ahabba ilayhi mimma siwahuma. That Allah and His Prophet become more beloved to you than anything else. Anything, anything, anything else. Allah and His Prophet have to become more beloved. And when this happens, not on the tongue, but in action, when this happens, you will taste the sweetness of him. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even commands us of this. He says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُلُوهُ Whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given you, take. then take it. Grab onto it. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the hadith that there will come a time when the fitan are so large. They're like the dark night. The tribulations. The and tribulations, the trials, yeah. the trials and the tribulations. And the only way of success is what? فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِيِينَ عَضُّوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِذِ Hold on to it. Hold on to it with your molders. Bite onto it with your molders. Because only then will you be guided. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a method of guidance for us, my dear brothers and Allah, sisters. Allah, Allah, sorry, yes, sir. Allah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Say, if you truly love me, then follow me. Then follow me. Follow who, Yani? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What's the consequence of that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونَ if, if you love Allah, follow me. What happens? يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ So when you love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is proclaiming love to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you forgiveness. And you know, this is, this is something that is very, very important. Why? Because we all want the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love us. But you know, my brothers and sisters, we always fall into this error. We sit and pick and choose how to win Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love and how to win Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favors and how can I? If you want Allah to love you, you have to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, Rasulullah came with the complete way. If you want the ultimate pleasure of Allah, you will never get it unless you're fully following the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sometimes you and I, we, we, we might sit down, mezzan, and we'll come up with a creative idea or something new right this is all good and right but but if we're not you know this will not bring you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to be worshipped subhanallah subhanallah I mean this is really about following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and of course it's I mean I mean it's not if someone is, wants to follow the sunnah it's very hard for them to follow all the sunnah of Rasulullah yeah. sallallahu alayhi wa immediately correct but we must take steps and the first step is for us to realize that his way is the best way. That his sunnah is the way for my guidance. That his sunnah is the way for my salvation. That following his sunnah is the way that will give me intercession on the day of judgment. The only way. The only way. Yeah. The only way. Yeah. But we ought to have that, that goal, that vision, that until I die, I will try and implement as many sunnah in my life. In fact, I heard once a sheikh say that whenever you hear a sunnah of Rasulullah make the intention that you want to follow this sunnah even if it's an intention, and even if you carry out this sunnah once in your life, one of the, 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 the you know, the salihin, he, he followed all the sunnah, and the only sunnah that he didn't follow, when he was, at, you know, towards his deathbed, he was on his deathbed, was the, the long hair of Rasulullah sallallahu so, alayhi wa sallam. He followed every single sunnah. When he was on his deathbed, he wanted to grab his hair, so that he could complete all the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is something that we should aim for. That never say, oh, it's a sunnah, it's optional, I'm not going to get sins if I don't do it. But, Loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is following his sunnah. And loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is aiming to, to carry out every single one of the sunnah that he prescribed sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, Malaz, we speak about loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, there is a hadith also where um, he returns that love to us, does he not? When he says to his companions, what does he say, Hafsas, tell me. <laughs> no, go, please. <laughs> oh, well, he says, you know, I... I, I I long to see my I long brothers. to see my, my beloved ones. Right? My beloved ones. And so the companion sent him and said, Ya Rasulullah, if, you know, if we were your beloved ones, right? Yeah. Um, so he said, No, you are my companions. You are my you know, my brothers, my companions. My beloved ones are those that will come after you, that will come, you know, in later days. They have never met me. They don't know like they've never seen me and they've never met me, yet they love me. 
and the, and they follow me subhanallah and you know what subhanallah he says and one of them will come to a point where he's willing to risk his family and his wealth to just lay his eyes on me subhanallah so you know he's already pronounced his love for us and this made companions yeah. jealous subhanallah yeah. that they would never yes. be able to do this right because they're there with him subhanallah you know like yeah. <laughs> subhanallah i once heard i once heard a quote subhanallah you know talking about the um the the fact that you know following the following the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is actually in reality for our own benefit right everything that he taught us everything the legacy he left behind is actually for us for our own benefit this is he's the example that allah chose to give to us you know to follow in all matters you know in in your your worship your daily life your your life as a father husband you know uh you know muslim and uh you know they they are perfect examples i heard a, you know a, um i don't know if it's a hadith about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying you know i am like you know like you are like the the moths yes around it's the hadith. fire no, right hadith. the moths no, around the fire that you know when you see when you see the uh moths and there's a light source they sort of always go to that you know you see them smashing against the light bulbs right. and and when there's a fire they actually go towards the fire not yeah. realizing that this fire actually will harm oh, them right yes, and it kill them he said to, you know and he said to his companions i'm like that person i'm trying to pull you away from that hell fire from you hurting yourself and i can see what's going to happen and i'm pulling you pulling you away from the fire and you're dragging yourself to the fire subhanallah you know that hadith uh, amazing it it doesn't specify muslims Mathali wa mathali nas, that's what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. My example and example of people, all of humanity. It didn't specify the believers only. All of humanity. Mo- Muslims, non-Muslims. Muslims, non-Muslims. He was sent mercy to mankind, to all the worlds. And subhanAllah, like, you need to fall in love with his character. And the way to fall in love with his character is learn about his stories, learn about his seerah, learn how he dealt with difficult situations, learn how he dealt with the sahaba, learn how he spoke, how he walked, how he was humble, how subhanAllah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so... What was so kind? Was so generous? How he was of children, for instance. How was you know Subhanallah? I mean, he was a father. Yes. He was. He was a you know. He, he, was, he was a, a grandfather. He was a grandfather. He was a husband. I mean, and he showed us. And Subhanallah, Aisha narrates so many different hadith where we learn <laughs> how he sallallahu alaihi wasallam dealt with his wife. You know, one of my favorite ones is when he uh, on Prophet sallam he played or patted or kissed and hugged one of his grandsons, right? Uh, and so, and one of the companions, I forgot who it was, basically said to him, you know, uh, I've got, you know, I don't know how many kids. I've never hugged my kids. I've never kissed my kids. He was actually um, surprised when he His seen, companion, you mean? Yes. Was surprised he to was see very Rasulullah. surprised to see Rasulullah on Rasulullah. the ground playing and hugging Showing and this emotion, yeah. So he says to him, yani, almost to say that this is unmanly. Yani. Yeah. He says I didn't him, expect uh, this of you. He says to him, you know, I have ten children. He, he says, says to him, a prophet of Allah, you know, <laughs> you know, I've got ten little rascals at home, and I've never hugged or kissed any one of them. Subhanallah. <laughs> but then look at what he says. He says, "What can I do if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has taken the rahma away from your heart?" Oh, oh, you know, he truly was the complete package. You know, you know, you know, Subhanallah. We, we, you know, sorry. We were saying earlier about the companions. And we were saying, you know, about how following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, is the only way. You know, my brothers and sisters, this is how the companions viewed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They knew everything he did and everything he said was their salvation. Right? It was their salvation. And subhanallah, you find that one of the biggest misconceptions in our time, one of the biggest, biggest diseases is... Our understanding of the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That today we've come to understand that when, that when you and I say sunnah, what does it now mean? Optional. Abu Ahmad? Optional. It means, uh, look, you, you know, don't have to do it. Look, if you do it, you get the reward. And if you don't do it, well then there's no harm on you. This is not how Sahaba looked at the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a lack of understanding. Uh, I, remember, I remember Abu Ahmad, you were, you were there with me on to this trip when we went to France. And I remember when I was there, I sat with one of the mashaykh and we had a good chat there. And I said to him, you know, tell me, tell me what is the difference between us and Sahaba? What's the difference? He says to me, my brother, the difference between us and Sahaba is they performed every single sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because it was the sunnah of Rasulullah. He says, we leave every sunnah because it's only the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what gave these men and women these levels, was they held on to everything. 
You know, some of the great companions, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, picked up, a, 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 you know, subhanAllah, he picked up the nickname of what? Majnoon al-Sunnah. Ma- imagine, the, the madman. The madman of the The wacko, Sunnah. with all due respect. The wacko. What? Majnoon al-Sunnah. Why? He knew. He knew. If you love Allah, then you follow who? Then you follow Muhammad. I'll give an example. There, 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 is a, there is a very good example. Yes. There, there's an example of, um, there, there was a branch of a tree. Yes. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa once went and he had to duck to go under this branch. When he was riding. When he was riding. He was riding something. And okay. And many years later, many years later, this branch was cut or the tree fell down. The tree wasn't like even that. there anymore, right? The yeah. Sahaba used to actually duck the same way that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the same location. Even there was nothing there. There was nothing there. In the same location. Why to emulate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I heard once as well, the companions, there was a place where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa turned his horse around. And he would turn his horse around in that same place. You know, because just to emulate Rasulullah yeah. sallallahu alayhi wa it wasn't just the Sahaba who loved him. Wallahi, even the trees loved him. SubhanAllah. You know, and we know of the beautiful, beautiful story when... We know of the beautiful story of when, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he used to give his khutbah in his masjid, there used to be a tree, a tree stump, yeah. right? And he used to lean on this until the community grew so much that they had to build him a bit of a, a bit of a pulpit or mumbar so that he can stand on it so that his voice can reach the back. And the first time he stood on the mumbar and he wasn't leaning on this tree, the tree began to cry. Subhanallah. Companions said he, he cried so loud. They heard the cry. They heard. It cried so loud. Some of them even described it as a pregnant, as a pregnant uh, 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 camel. Right? And he was crying so loudly. And, he, and in fact, it actually didn't stop crying until Rasulullah got off his mumbar. Came over to the tree. He had to hug the tree. He consoled it. So right? And he, and he actually had to have the conversation with it. And he said to it, look, if you wish, you can accept what's happened. Right? And I'll ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you from a tree of paradise. Only then did the tree decide to stop crying. Subhanallah. You know? Wallahi, you know, this is, this is a sign. If a tree cried... A tree cried, then who are we, flesh and bones, followers of this great man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, if we were to praise him and make salat on him, right from now until the day of judgment, Wallahi, we will not do him justice. SubhanAllah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had such a wonderful character, such wonderful morals, and such, so much mercy in his, in his heart for people and for humanity. One day, and we all know the story, the Arabi came into the mosque and he started urinating. He started urinating inside the mosque. So the Sahaba became furious. They wanted to chop this man's head off. <laughs> what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa do in this moment? Can you imagine if this happens to us locally? Can you imagine somebody who walks into the mosque today as the mosque is and starts urinating? What will be our response? I will be in little pieces by the end of the how, episode. How will we respond? Imagine yeah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa look, look what he was thinking. He said, do not interrupt his urination. Leave him. Let him finish. Let him finish. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. That's how thoughtful and merciful Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. Subhanallah. And then he ordered the Sahaba to pour a bucket of water on top of it and he consulted him nicely. If you were harsh hearted, no one would have listened to you. He had the softest heart. He told this man, This is not a place for this. And then what did the man say? He said, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and you the mercy and, and no one else. <laughs> and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told him, and you've, you've narrowed something that's very wide. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very wide. Another instance, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is when there was a Jewish man that made a deal with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over, over some dates. And they, 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 they had a, a deal and the man was supposed to, you know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was supposed to pay this man by a certain day. So this man comes in one day. And he grabs Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa from his clothes and he asks Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in front of everyone, where is my money? Although he came before the due date and he accuses Bani Hashim, he accuses the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of not paying the dues. Umar radiallahu anhu, being the man that he is, he drew out his sword and he was about to chop this man's neck off. This man became so frightened. So frightened. Listen to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's response. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him what? He said, Ya Umar, that's not how you deal with this. You should have ordered me to pay up my dues and you should have ordered him to ask nicely. 
then he ordered Umar himself, Umar himself, to go to Bayt al-Mal. Give him his money. Give him his money and to add something additional because Umar frightened him. From, from Umar's own wealth, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered, ordered Umar to give this man, this Jewish man, something from his personal wealth because of the fright that he gave this man. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, I mean, words are cheap. Yeah. Anyone can say, Allah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But until you truly follow his sunnah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you try very hard and sacrifice to emulate his character, emulate his personality, follow every single sunnah that he gave us, that is when true love flourishes. That's when true love is, is action, there. Action. Is action. It's all about action, really. No. Subhanallah. Well, look, uh, I think this uh, sort of brings us towards the end of our show. Wallahi, we, we, we haven't done anything in this show. We Absolutely haven't given not. any justice whatsoever. And I'm sure many of you now are thinking, why didn't you mention this and why didn't you mention that? Wallahi, I'm telling you, if you were to speak from now until the Day of Judgment, you couldn't possibly cover it and give it justice. But uh, inshallah, I would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for tuning in. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to join us with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Firdaus al-A'la. To make him our companion in the, in, in the day, on, the, on the day of judgment. To, to give us intercession through him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So and to give us a dwelling in paradise next to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amen. 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 Allah khair. Um, our dear brothers and sisters in Islam. We conclude by saying the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney radio program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney.